Hey everyone, I'm Karamo here at the Wilshire Bell Theater in Los Angeles, California, where Dustin Lance Black's play, Eight, is about to start. And we're here on the red carpet. Tonight is an amazing night. Some of the biggest actors in Hollywood, from George Clooney to Brad Pitt, are going to be here to take part in this play. And we're going to try to catch up with them and everyone else who's involved in the trial, just for you. When they turn eight into a movie, who would you like to play you? <laughs> They're doing a very good job of finding people to represent me so far. The fundamental constitutional right to marry has been taken away from the plaintiffs and tens of thousands of similarly situated Californians. This state has rewritten its constitution in order to place them into a special disfavored category where their most intimate personal relationships are not valid, not recognized, and second rate. So the recent ruling um, at the Ninth Appellate Court, how do you feel about that? Well, we're very, very happy. The district court that heard the case decided that Proposition 8 is unconstitutional. Now, the biggest appellate court in the United States has held it unconstitutional. Yes. We are very, very pleased with the outcome. I'm not too surprised because this is discrimination, it's inequality, it should end, and we're very, very gratified that the courts are agreeing with us so far. Your shows, you've been tackling a lot of issues all this time. How do you feel about that years later we still have to deal with issues of this nature? I, I think it's great on the one hand, it's a shame that uh, it didn't happen earlier. The American people have been ready and they're showing it everywhere. Uh, they've been ready for this a long time. Uh, they, American people are fair-headed, fair-minded, and uh, not given credit by their own establishment for as wise-hearted and fair-minded as they are. He is giving you three choices. Yes, no, I don't know. But I do know. I do know the answer. Then is it yes or is it no? Your, Your Honor, I can answer the question, but I cannot give an accurate answer if the only two choices I have are yes and no. I, if you give me a sentence, I can answer it. So one sentence is all I'm asking for. <laughs> I'm a First Amendment lawyer in addition to being a, a lawyer in this, in this case fighting Proposition 8. We fought to have the trial televised because we thought what would be better, have America see the evidence on both sides. The, the anti-marriage forces fought that and they succeeded and so the, the video of the trial remains under wraps. So the next best thing, in fact it's probably even better in terms of getting America to, to watch this. It, I mean we're, our legal team is great but to have George Clooney and Brad Pitt and Martin Sheen in this cast I think more people are going to pay attention. So we took a bad ruling and we've turned it into something good. And so we're very excited. This will be a way for everybody to see the evidence. We're going to see the evidence and the arguments on both sides. And I think we win when that happens. Keep in mind, this same-sex marriage is a very recent innovation. Its implications of a social and cultural nature, uh, not to mention its impact on marriage over time, can't possibly be known. So this is a political question, and the court should abstain? Is that it? What it does is it gets out the fact of what happened at this trial. Uh, if you had David Boyce up there reading his lines, some people would listen, but not so many. You have George Clooney reading the lines, and a lot more people listen. And the reason it's important to make people listen is because when you understand the factual record, when you understand what happened at this trial, you understand that there simply is not an argument on the other side. That every evidence, every piece of fact, Every legal precedent is one way, which is that this is unconstitutional and that the discrimination against gay and lesbian couples and the children that they're raising harms them in serious ways and benefits nobody. Who's playing you all tonight? Uh, George Clooney is playing me. Okay. <laughs> Brad Pitt is playing me. So. Matt, I'm Matt Bomer. Okay, and Matthew Morrison is playing me. It doesn't give due respect to the relationship that we've had for almost nine years. Only marriage could do that. Husband is definitive. It's something that everyone understands. There is no subtlety to it. It is absolute, and it comes with the understanding that your relationship is not temporal. It's not new. It's, it's not something that could fade easily. We would love to have a family. What we're doing is really just a microcosm of, of the harms that we have in our lives are the harms that all gay and lesbian people have. So by, by putting a, a spotlight on that through the words that we've said in, in the trial, then, then hopefully the truth will win. Well, I think any time that people can come together for love and the side of like civil rights and all these things, it's incredible. And one of my best friends, my best friends in the show, and Chris Colfer, and I can't. I'm so excited. Uh, is he preparing? 
I think so. I think I'm supposed to go say hi to him before it starts. <laughs> It's an amazing thing. You can get married in Vegas and get divorced the next morning, and that's apparently okay. You can get married 45 times, and apparently that's okay. Yeah. And that's the sanctity of marriage is afforded to people like that. And they're not, I mean, people get more offended that people have been together 50 years, a gay and lesbian couple, and they're getting married. Now that's going to destroy marriage. It's beyond me. So, look, this, this debate, uh, we're starting to win this debate. But there's a lot of folks that are not convinced. And, you know, my father's generation, my dad, when I did this thing a number of years ago and started marrying couples in San Francisco, he was one of my biggest opponents. He was really worried. He said, can't you just call it something else? This is a progressive guy, uh, a liberal by any objective political standard, but he just wasn't comfortable with it. What's changing is there's a generational shift. Uh, where people are saying Democrats and Republicans, younger folks, so come on, can't we focus on something else? And they're understanding that arc of history. Oh, isn't that the guy from the league? Who is? That's the one from Modern Family. Right here. We're taking it to the stage, and we're going to theaters and universities and going to communities where they might be voting on it on their, in their legislature or, or on the ballot. Um, and we're going to 70 different theaters in 25 different states in the next year. It's really about finding those places where, you know, even in Oklahoma, there's a community theater that's receptive to this issue. And it's so important that we, it, this isn't preaching to the choir, this is teaching our choir how to sing. Hi, Real Gay TV. <laughs> how was tonight for you? Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was such an amazing cast, and I'm so grateful to all of them for participating in this. We raised some money, too, to pay for the court uh, uh, costs, and it's going to move forward, and I think we'll go to the Supreme Court. I have fought for the marriage issue for 25 years, Evan, because I believe the ideal for a child is a married mother and father. Marriage is not a relationship invented by the government. To uh, have a scene with Jane Lynch playing Maggie Gallagher yeah. had to be, I mean, what, what could be more fun yeah. than that? You know, it was great. The main reason I wanted to be a part of this is that these transcripts have been so closely guarded, and this was a chance for them to be accessible and open to the people, and I wanted to be a part of telling that story because if we are going to call ourselves a country that says everyone is created equal, then this just has to go away. What this evening did was it exposed the absolute baselessness and the ridiculousness of those that uh, are supporting Proposition 8. You believe that after the Netherlands legalized same-sex marriage, the Netherlands went on after that to legalize incest and polygamy and... I mean, who told you that, sir? It's in the Internet. In the internet. We met in a running club, and I was in his shadow then. He was the best runner in the club. Many years ago. Well, yeah, you have grown. But we're celebrating this Monday our 25th anniversary of being a committed, loving couple to each other. So we've been together 25 years, but I always tell George it feels much longer. <laughs> Well, you know, all I'm doing is telling stories. That's it, and it, it's that simple. It's what it is. What has always moved every civil rights fight forward. So anyone who wants to do it, I say, join in. You know, start telling your story, and, uh, and it's amazing how it can start changing hearts and minds. Irresponsible procreation, illegitimate natural children. What is he talking about in there? They're going to say whatever they have to. It doesn't mean it's true or that it's about you. You two certainly weren't accidents. God, no. So he was talking about us, I mean, me and Elliot, specifically, to our faces. Spencer, it's not... Technically, no, I... his back was to us, Spence. <laughs> he didn't even say it to our faces. And I'm a tough guy, and you brought me to tears. Where did you bring that emotion from for this, playing the plaintiff? Well, first of all, I, I know, I met Chris, the real plaintiff, and um, 
I met her sons, and I have three children of my own, and that's all I had to think about. The idea of anybody disrespecting my children for something that they are, bullying them, making them feel diminished. I don't have to go much deeper than that. You know, when you see these things, you realize the impact it has beyond the courtroom. You know, when you saw the story of the families involved, and uh, these are very real day-to-day -day issues for people. It's not some uh, philosophical concept or some religious doctrine. It's 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 the way people are. You know, it's the way they are able to have families and. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, the studies show that adoptive parents, um, because of the rigorous screening process that they undertake before becoming adoptive parents, actually on some outcomes outstrip the biological parents in terms of providing protective care for their children. Yes, I was going to come to that. I appreciate you for getting there. I just read the transcripts, yeah. you know, if it was funny, it was funny because this, this person wasn't very prepared when he went to court, um, but that said, when he was asked to tell the truth about his previous statements, he told the truth, I thought that was admirable, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough, tough thing for him to be up there, you know, defending pretty much an indefensible argument. What was it for you to be a part of this tonight? I mean, I, I, I felt like I was c kind of part of history in a way, and, and it angers me so much that we are still living in yet another ugly chapter of our country's history, where we're discriminating. We're not discriminating that guy, we're discriminating that guy. Um, and it, it's great to, to, in my opinion, be on the right side of history. You acknowledged in your deposition, did you not, that some people report to have effective results with this conversion therapy. Isn't that true? Yes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. And was this therapy successful in that you were able to suppress your homosexuality? Nope, I was just as gay as when I started. <laughs> um, and actually, I literally have an action figure of George Clooney from Batman and Robin. There, I admitted it. Right, right. I was seven. How old were you? I was eight. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> go, so it's okay. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it was great to be up there with him and, and um, and just, and, and, just, and just kind of be in such a supportive environment with so many important people supporting the cause. You cannot say after the fact, we are going to take away the constitutional right to liberty, privacy, association, and sexual intimacy that we already tell you you have. That is not acceptable. It is not acceptable under our Constitution, and Mr. Blankenhorn is absolutely right. The day we end that, we will be more American. Thank you. Tonight, what you saw would be like the, um, maybe the highlights, okay? Yeah. So that last speech had to be uh, kind of a wallop, you know, to get people's attention to this injustice that had been perpetrated and how people have been marginalized and, and denigrated because of their choice. And, you know, forget the moral higher ground uh, that these characters had uh, assumed, which is disgraceful but it's a legal argument. You cannot unring a bell, you cannot give a certain segment of the population a right and then take it away. No, no, that doesn't work. Uh, and and it's, it's just not going to stand. And this, this issue is going to go to the Supreme Court. It has to. We don't have any choice.